Hi guys, it's Tristan here. So this video we're going to be talking about the paediatric assessment triangle. So why do we need things like this? Well, this is basically a tool to help us decide whether a child is unwell or not. And that's important for a couple of reasons. One is that most of the children who come to the paediatric emergency department are actually quite well, but it is important to be able to identify those who aren't well so that we can investigate them and treat them appropriately. And also so we don't invest all those resources into the well children who don't need it. And then the second thing is that quite a lot of guidelines will say things like, if a child is well, then they can be observed and discharged home after a period of time. But if they are unwell, then they need to have a lumbar puncture and be admitted for empirical antibiotics. So you need to have some kind of framework for actually deciding, is a child well or unwell? And if you're not that experienced, you can't just rely on your clinical gestalt because you won't have seen enough cases to be 100% sure whether a child you're looking at is a well child or an unwell child. So it's helpful to break it down. There's been a few different attempts to do this using different kind of scoring systems or different frameworks. And I think this one is probably one of the simplest and quite well validated ones. So let's go through it now. So the triangle is just these three things, ABC, appearance, breathing and circulation. So we all know ABCs as an airway, breathing, circulation, and this just replaces the airway of A with A for appearance. Um, breathing and circulation stay the same. And we'll go through each of these in turn now. So appearance, I want you to remember Tickles, and this is Mr. Tickle from the Mr. Men. And Tickles uh, is an acronym that sounds for this, so tone, interactiveness, consolability, the look, and speech. And let's just go through those individually so that we know what they mean. So the T is for tone, so that is the child. Um, so children, once they're about kind of three to six months old, should be able to hold their head up and then hold their body up. And um, if they're unwell, they might be really floppy, and that's a sign of them being unwell. Um, same is most children should be smiling and looking around. They start to smile from about six weeks or earlier sometimes, and um, they should look interested at things. So if they're just not really looking at anything or engaging at all, that's a sign that they're more unwell. And then consolability. So it's normal for children to cry for like loads of reasons, and it's not that concerning for children to be crying. Sometimes it's reassuring because it means they're alert and thinking about their situation. Um, but most children should stop crying when they're being comforted. So if a child's more unwell and they're just completely inconsolable then they won't be able to be um you know soothed by their mother or father comforting them when they're crying and that's a worrying sign and then finally most children shouldn't just be kind of staring with glazed eyes off into the distance so if a young child is doing that that's another worrying sign that they're probably less well and need a bit more looking into and then finally, the, the character of the cry. So if their speech and crying is normal for them, that's really reassuring. If they have a kind of abnormal, really high-pitched squealing or crying that is not typical for them, then that might be something that you need to look into a bit more. So that's tickles, tone, interactiveness, consolability, look and speech. And that's just a formalised way of going through A for appearance when you're looking at a child. The next thing is breathing, and breathing is basically all the signs of respiratory distress. So we're looking for um, nasal flaring and grunting, particularly in young babies, and then tracheal tug, also in young children, and then we get intercostal and subcostal recession, abdominal breathing. And all those are signs that the muscles of respiration are not doing as well as they would otherwise, and the child's having to recruit accessory muscles to um, move air in and out of their lungs. Finally, we come on to C, which is circulation. And again, that's mainly looking at the colour of the child. So pallor is probably the most um, worrying early sign that you can get. And then mottling is another sign that can be quite significant. Although depending on what the baby looks like and their ethnicity, it might be normal for some babies to be, babies to be mottled. So you just have to ask the parents whether the child is like looking normal for them or whether the mottling is new. And then cyanosis is a really worrying sign, but often occurs quite late. So it's not something that you can rely on as a, you know, the only indicator of sepsis or severe illness, because cyanosis is often a sign that doesn't develop until you've had kind of the beginnings of cardiorespiratory collapse. So don't forget the bubbles have a really good um, infographic, which I've just shown you here about the paediatric assessment triangle. And so basically, if you look in the top left, you can see that if A, B and C are all normal, then the child is stable and probably not that unwell. And then if you've got abnormalities in appearance and circulation, that's signs of shock. Whereas if you've got an abnormality in terms of breathing only, then that's respiratory distress. But if you've got appearance and breathing, then that's respiratory failure. And if you've got um, normal breathing and circulation, but an abnormal appearance, they've got abnormal tone, 
for example, that might be central nervous system or they might have something like DKA. And then if everything's going wrong, you get cardiorespiratory failure and that causes all three parameters to change. And this has been validated in a couple of studies that found it was a pretty good tool for distinguishing unwell and well children and also a pretty good tool for identifying pathophysiology. So it's a pretty good tool. Uh, I like it and I think it's certainly good to uh, lean on it a bit when you're new to the emergency department or new to paediatrics. So you're just kind of getting used to breaking down what exactly things mean when people say, does a child look well or unwell? Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, the next couple of videos we're going to be doing um, unwell or febrile children under the age of four weeks and then under the age of three months. So um, hope you enjoy those ones.